in orbit above Earth. Lieutenant Commander Waxon, do you have a moment? Ah, oh, of, of course. Commander Kaniak, uh, how can I help you? I'd like to speak to you about Lieutenant Lee. She is... Uh, let me stop you right there. Counselor... Uh, Chief, whether or not Lee comes with us on this mission is above both of our pay grades. I'm not the one you need to speak with. I already talked to the captain. She thinks Lee is up to the job. And don't you think the captain knows better than either of us? I mean, not really. You know... Uh, hearing she... rumors is not the same thing as knowing. And if she hasn't told you herself, then you don't know anything. Fair enough. But where Lee is concerned, the captain's judgment Are you really about to tell me that the captain's judgment is compromised? I, uh... Of course not. But, Counselor, surely you of know... Of course I know their connection, and I know that Lee's connection to Kake. Then how can you think it's a good idea to let my assistant chief engineer remain on duty? Dick Kake was practically a father to her. Did you or did you not choose Lee for her role because of her abilities? I didn't choose her at all. You didn't? No. It was the captain's decision. Interesting. Did you object to having her assigned to your team? Obviously not. She's brilliant. Well, she's also an ASS officer. Show her some respect. But Let her do her job. But, Counselor... How would you feel if you were in her situation? I guess you're right. Of course I am, Chief. I'm the Counselor. A damned annoying Counselor. Uh, that's why I'm so effective. <laughs> this is Universe Journey. It's 2432, and the ASS Thrifty Too Fast, Too Furious explores the galaxy under the command of Captain Michelle Toccolati. Uh, Captain Toccolati is dealing with some personal issues. That's Ambassador Kake, former captain of the ship, and now liaison to the various species they come across. Last year, the nearly omnipotent Z tossed the crew of the Thrifty Two more than 55 years from the Earth. On board the Starship are Takalati's partner and ship's counselor, Jay Jameson, their infant daughter, Everly, her first officer, Michael Anders, chief engineer, Commander Combe Foley, Foley's fiancé, science officer, Captain Bobby Luna, android lieutenant, Commander New Fakalati, security chief, lieutenant, Commander Connie Norton, and pilot, Lieutenant Yana. Plus, a totally incompetent doctor, a lounge singer, a bartender, a bunch of security officers and ensigns, and, and now an alien guide and a negotiator known only as the Concierge. This starship has quite a universe journey! Space! We're in you! Tonight's episode, Day Off. We begin in the corridor of the ASS Thrifty Too Fast, Too Furious. The entertainment suite. Yeah! Lieutenant Yana, I really... We're off duty, Norton. Drop the rank. I... I don't know what your first name is. I'm Yana. Your name is Yana Yana. Don't be stupid. Your personnel file only has a single name listed. Right. My species doesn't need multiple names. We're not that fancy. That must get confusing. Surely with billions of you in existence, you would run out of unique names. We've been serving together a while, Norton. Shouldn't you have learned something about my species by now? Y yes, yes, you are, you're right. I apologize. I will endeavor to research... Uh, I'm over it. Let's go. <laughs> 
But really, Yana, the entertainment suite. What's your problem with the entertainment suite? Nothing. I use it to vary my workout routine. It's just... Well, you're going to get quite a workout today. Let's get in there. (sighs) Why did I agree to spend my off hours with you? Because I'm fun. (laughs) Sure, that has to be it. I am. I'm fun. (laughs) In the science lab on the starship. What? (laughs) Oh, nothing. Just watching you work. Shouldn't you be down in engineering? Our repairs are done as much as they can be for the moment. We're just in orbit. I can take a break. I've seen how much isn't working, and I know a lot of the new tech doesn't really match up with ours. Maybe not as many breaks, Calm. Oh, hark, Bobby. Should I work myself to death now? I might kill you if you don't give me some breathing room. Uh, I'm sorry, love. It's just that I... I I know. I'm very happy to be with you, too. But we don't have to spend every waking second together. You weren't complaining last week. Do you regret choosing to come here, Bobby? I wasn't given a choice. That makes it worse. But if I had been, I would have chosen this. Really? With little hope ever of seeing home again? You are my home, Colm. That's the only reason Z let Dick bring me here. You might come to resent it over time. Resent me. I could never resent you. Well, stay out here a couple of decades and see if you still feel that way. Is that what this is about? You're holding on tight because you think you're going to lose me? You've never been insecure about us. Why now, Colm? Bobby, I'm afraid if I close my eyes, you might disappear again. I'm not going anywhere. I'm here. I've been here for weeks. Aye, but our time apart, I don't mind saying, I didn't cope with it so well. I can see that by the way you've been hovering lately. I don't mean to hover. But you are. I... Look, Colm, you know I'm happy to be with you, really. Our evenings have been amazing, and when I got here, I didn't want to leave your side for a second. But that's not sustainable. We need to do our jobs and find that equilibrium again. Settle into whatever is normal now. Fine, fine. I'll give you your space. I don't need space. But I do need to feel like you can take your eyes off me for a few hours and be okay. Can you do that? I, lass, I I reckon I can. Good. I need to recalibrate our lateral tertiary sensors now that you've got them working again. See you in our apartment tonight? You will, indeed. In the entertainment suite. Is this a... Bocce ball court. Yes, sir, it is. Pardon me, Lieutenant... Yana... But you don't strike me as a bocce type. Why not? It's a contest of coordination. As the best pilot in the fleet, I'm always looking to hone those skills. Best. I've got the trophies to prove it. Then why are you on this starship? Are you kidding me? Dick Cockay's reputation? He's always getting into trouble. I figured I'd have plenty of chances to deploy my trade on this craft. Well, that has certainly proven to be true. It has. So you recognize the court? Ever play? No. Then how do you know it? My grandfather used to play it all the time. In his retirement, became a bit obsessed. No way! Your grandfather was Harrison Norton? Yes. Yes, he was. He's a legend in the sport! More than I thought if his reputation extended off Earth. It certainly did! I saw him play once. Amazing! A true artist. He's almost as good as I am. (laughs) Was. He passed away several years ago. I know. I'm sorry for your loss. Were you close? Somewhat. Whenever I was back on Earth, which wasn't often. How come you never played? Intimidated by his greatness? No. I just didn't see the point. I'll bet I can change your mind on that. Hmm. I wouldn't count on it. Well, let's spend a few hours and see, shall we? Hours? Come on, give it a chance. (sighs) One hour. I can make that work. In the dining hall. Is this seat taken? Uh, huh? Uh, no. No, you go ahead. Oh, thank you. I don't believe we've met. I'm the concierge. Yeah, I know. Lieutenant Ransom. Security. I assumed as such with those nice, big, broad shoulders. Nice to meet you, Lieutenant Ransom. Tell me, 
What does a security officer do on a vessel like this? Excuse me? Oh, well, I mean, I assume there aren't many internal crimes, thefts, murders, that sort of thing for you to investigate? Absolutely not. Our team generally provides safety when we leave the ship. Ah, that makes so much more sense. You know, I'm a member of the crew now. I had not heard that. Mm, Yes, indeed. So, if I have some errands to run, uh, off ship as it were, uh, is there a way you could... I could call you personally to come escort me. We are not personal bodyguards. Oh, I apologize. I didn't mean to imply that If you're on official Starship business, the captain or exo will assign you a security detail. Of course, of course. And what if it's not official business? You said you're an official member. What position exactly do you... Lieutenant Ransom, is CC here harassing you? I can handle him, Ambassador. Dick, how good to see you. I was just making this man's acquaintance. Not what it sounded like to me. Oh, well, I was merely inquiring about... Oh, I about know exactly what you were doing. What did he offer you, Ransom? Sir? Th- to guard his back, I mean. Oh. What's he willing to give you? I didn't let him get that far, sir. Good man. Now, Ambassador Kake. Look, Sergio, I'm under no illusions here that we need you. Obviously, we do. But make no mistake, I know that you need us, too. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Ambassador. Really? That stuff with your former second? You're going to tell me you haven't been playing us to escape from him? Of course not. I can handle Rizak's. If you think that I... Hey, hey, hey. No need to get testy here. I was just letting you know that I know. (laughs) Kapaichi? Kapaichi? Kapaichi. It it means, do you understand? Oh, then yes, Ambassador Kake. I definitely understand. Do you? Did you just threaten the ambassador? (laughs) Not at all. I'm just reminding him how much this ship does need me. If it wants to escape the Vena and someday get home... I already told you that I know that. Good. Then we are on the same page. Yes, as long as you leave my security officers and everyone else on board alone. Ambassador Kake, I would never entertain oh, a single... Oh, I know, Ransom, I know. I trust every member of this crew and have no doubts about where their loyalty lies. But you don't need to put up with Coco Melon's crap. Well, thank you, sir. I'm a friendly person, Ambassador. Surely you don't expect me to hide away in my room all day. That would be nice, but no. You can keep the run of this ship as long as you don't harass anyone else. And just so we're clear, by harass you mean... Harass. Ask them for favors that go beyond their job descriptions. Harass, as in try to make deals that conflict with their duties. Well, I wouldn't dream of it. Excellent. Now, don't we have a meeting to get to? Oh, are we near Turnic 2 already? Very close. Ransom! You want to go down planet side and stretch your legs? Oh, absolutely, sir. Cool beans. You're on my service today. Let's go. Oh, uh, sir, I, I should probably check in with Lieutenant Commander Norton and update her. Oh, uh, of course. Oh. I would never ask you to break chain of command, but I'm sure she won't have a problem with you coming along. No, sir, I, I'm sure she won't. In the entertainment suite. Letting Ransom go instead of yourself, huh? Must not be having too bad a time getting your ass kicked repeatedly. You are a self-proclaimed expert in the sport, and I have never tried it before today. Do you really feel the need to brag about beating me? Absolutely. And I'll (laughs) I'll brag that I changed your mind. Your hour was up ages ago, and you're still here. You have not changed my mind. (laughs) No? You're going to claim Bocce hasn't won you over? It has not. Then what are you still doing here? I do not back down from a challenge. You may have won every game, but I have gotten better with each subsequent match. That's true. You still stink, but slightly less than when we started. (laughs) It would be a defeat to bow out now without reaching at least a somewhat competent level of skill. In case you're ever challenged to a bocce tournament to the death? (laughs) Something like that. Shall we begin another round? I thought you'd never ask. In engineering... A bloody move out of the way! Commander, I just- I know what you're bloody doing, Nito! I had it, Chief Foley. Oh, had it? Had it? 
Oh, come on, Nito. You've been on my service for months and still can't even tighten a nanolug correctly. I was doing it correctly. Oh, then how come I have to shove you aside and do it myself? You didn't have to. It, with all due respect, sir, it, this isn't about me. Oh, what do you bloody mean this isn't about you? Who else is assisting me so incompetently? Sir, I have loads of respect for you. You are a brilliant engineer, and it has been an honor Ah, oh, spit to... it out, Ensign. You need help. Yes, I definitely need one additional person on this bloody ship that knows the difference between a self-sealing... No, a... sir. You're interrupting your superior officer, Nito. Yes, sir. I'll say your piece. I've had the opportunity to observe you, and there's something wrong, sir. What isn't wrong? Okay, we're in hell of a position. I mean, mentally, sir. What did you accuse me of, Nito? There's, there's no shame, sir. I have a family history. <laughs> a family history, huh? What, you're a shrink now? Well, it's clear that you're not a bloody engineer. You don't have to bite my head off, sir. I'll damn well do as the situation warrants. Yes, sir. When, and when you yell at me for legitimate failings, I'll take it. Even though it's incredibly unprofessional on your part. Unprofessional. But when it is not warranted, I'm going to start speaking up. Because I'm, I am learning, and I deserve a better mentor. Mentor? I barely tolerate you. Well, none of the other ensigns are even willing to come down here anymore. So you'd better do a lot more than tolerate me if you... Don't want to be the only one in this engineering room. Well, if you're my only option, you know, being alone would be a dream. For who? Because Thrifty 2 isn't going to survive with just a single engineer. Gods forbid if something happened to you, I sure hope you would have prepared me to handle at least the basics. And nothing's gonna happen to me, Ensign. You're not that lucky. I hope not, sir. But we... We need you. And we need you at your best. Which... You most certainly are not at. Oh, excuse me. I'm as healthy as a horse. Physically, maybe. But you need to treat your mental health, too. Oh, you have overstepped, Ensign. It's my duty, sir. In this instance... Oh, get out of my sight! I'm not going I... anywhere. Fine. The supplemental compression system in the aft needs a tune-up. That's where I'll be. Don't destroy my engine room in my stead. Yes, sir. Oh, that's it. No threats to report me to higher up. <laughs> I thought you'd grown a spine. That wouldn't do any good. You can't be helped if you don't want to be. I care about you. I hope you'll start caring about yourself. Oh, screw off, Benson. And mind your own damn bloody business. On the surface of Turnic 2. <laughs> ah, smell that. Smell what? The air. Yours on the starship is just so stale. It feels good to be back on a planet again. Hey, now what is wrong with the Thrifty Two's air? Uh, nothing, nothing, and if you want to uh, stay no here... Ambassador, yeah. let's get this done and get back to the Thrifty. As much as I like seeing a sun in the sky, this isn't the most hospitable planet for long-term settlement. I'll say. Are any of these buildings even functional? Oh, most of them. Repairs and upkeep just aren't high on the priority list for most locals. And why not? Well, some care a little bit more about trying not to starve than replacing a broken window. So, where's your contact? Sheenan. Hmm. Should be third building on the left there. Should be? Well, in my line of work, people move a lot. Last time she was here, that's where she was. Lieutenant Ransom, kindly keep an eye out for anyone looking a bit shifty. Everyone here looks a bit shifty. <laughs> Norton transferred you the images of Gregor's people we encountered, right? Gregor? Uh, yes, sir. I, I've seen them. Oh, good, good. You spot either of them. Call for a beamer out immediately. Don't hesitate. Uh, don't we need the terminal absorbers we're here for? Uh, yes, Ransom, but we need to be alive to use them. <laughs> This place isn't that bad. You'll leave here alive. I sure hope so. I have a date with Angela tonight. It's going to be great. Lieutenant Yeti, 
Ooh, she's hot. Good going, Ransom. It is going to be great. Hey, uh, thank you, sir. But I'd, I'd appreciate it if you didn't objectify any crew persons that, like you just did. Oh, oh, uh, right. Uh, sorry. Old habits die harder than John McLean. Mm. What? Oh, uh, ask Totalati. Uh, it's an old Earth reference. Hmm, all right. Shall we proceed? Yes. Let's. The party walks cautiously into one of the dilapidated buildings as the entrance slides open. It's gloomy, but their eyes adjust quickly to the, thanks to the light streaming in from broken windows. They walk towards a room at the end of a long hallway, Lieutenant Ransom alertly looking into each room as they pass for signs of a trap. There's no trap. <laughs> oh, are you so sure? Of course. Pretty sure. <laughs> Not good enough for me, sir. Ah, here we are. The concierge pushes the final door, which had been slightly cracked, fully open. An alien woman in a bright pink fuzzy sweater sits on a beaten-up sofa, sipping from a teacup. Come in, come in, Domino dear. How good it is to see you again. Likewise, Sheenan. It's been too long. Yes, it has. I'm pleased to see you haven't forgotten me. I could never. Let me introduce Ambassador Dick Kake of the ASS and his security officer, Ransom. A pleasure. Can I pour you a cup? Sure. No. Uh, apologies, Sheenan. We shouldn't have disturbed you. Nonsense. Have a seat. Uh, I'd prefer to stand, if you don't mind. Whatever makes you comfortable, dear. You know, actually, I, I, I just remembered a previous engagement that I really Dom, should Dom, be... no. You wouldn't run off so quickly on me, would you? Of course not, Sheenan. Good. Sit. Let's catch up. All right. It's nice to meet you, Shira. Your buddy here tells me you can help us procure a part that we need. Quite possibly. But there's no need for shop talk just yet. Let's get to know one another, shall we? We are rather in a hurry. Don't be rude, Domino dear. <sighs> I wouldn't dream of it. In the entertainment suite. Had enough? I'm just getting started. You're not going to win, you know. I know. I just don't want to continue to lose. Not losing is winning. Not necessarily. I don't get you, Norton. You say you hate this game, but you've been playing all day. I told you, Yana, I do not shirk a challenge. I don't think that's it. Oh, enlighten me. I think you're lonely. I'm... I am too. You are. Of course. I don't know if I'll ever see any of my family again, my friends, anyone. We will get home. Eventually. But if we've missed 50 years of their lives, who knows who will even be there to welcome us back? You knew about my grandfather before you invited me here. I did. Do you even like bocce ball? I played a bit in college. You did all of this just to try to bond with me. Guilty. Thought it'd be nice to have a friend. Why me, Anna? You're not all clingy and annoying and whiny like most of the crew. <laughs> and there aren't a lot of senior staff to choose from. That too. You could always hang out with my security team. There are many who share your rank. I hate security people. I'm the security chief. <laughs> yeah, but you're not like them. In what way? You're... Fun. <laughs> No one has ever called me fun before. <laughs> well, maybe my definition of fun doesn't align with most people's, but I had a hell of a time whooping you today. I had fun too. No, you didn't. No, I didn't. <laughs> but I enjoyed spending my off time with someone who doesn't annoy me for once. Don't you usually spend your downtime alone? Yes. <laughs> well, I don't think you're annoying. I have often found you annoying, but not today. You didn't force me into endless small talk. You didn't push me to discuss my feelings about my grandfather. Oh, why would I? Those are private matters. Of course. They're no one else's business. That being said, looking into him recently, I did admire your grandfather. So if you ever wanted to talk to someone about him, you could talk to me. Only if the mood strikes you, of course. No pressure. That would be... Nice. <laughs> you know what, I'm kind of over this game for a while. Want to towel off and get a drink? That would be nicer. See? 
fun. In Foley and Luna's apartment. How was your day? Oh, bloody awful. You know, the damn ensign decided to tell me off. Uh, can you believe that? Do they not teach respect for the chain of command anymore? Did you deserve it? What do you bloody mean, did I deserve it? You've been a bit tense lately. I, I mean, what exactly... She was bloody screwing things up, so I told her off first. And then she backtalked me like a petulant child. All right. And she was making a mess of things. I believe I, you. She deserved it. No, what do you think I am, Bobby? A monster? No. If you say it was just bad calm, I'm sure it was. Well, I bloody do say that. <sighs> I'm, I'm sorry, love. I didn't mean to bring my work problems home. I know you'd rather separate the two. That's not what I said. Well, isn't it? When you kicked me out of your lab earlier? No, it's not. You can talk to me about anything. Uh, can I, Bobby? Because it sure seems you're hot and cold these days. Well, depending on the environmental controls... Are you I... joking, Haas? Sorry, I'm just trying to lighten the mood. Calm, I think we need to have a serious discussion. About what? I, I heard about you walking out of engineering during the last crisis just before I got here. Uh, who bloody told you that? It doesn't matter. Is it true? I, I might have gotten a bit frustrated by the situation, but I went to work when I was needed. Mm -hmm. Look, Calm, I... Uh, what, lass? I think you need to talk to Jay. Jay? Is that who told you about no. my No! La Jay's been a bit preoccupied with his own family lately. Oh, Any time I've spent with him, I've been consulting on the science of Everly's issue. There hasn't been exactly been time to talk about anything else. Ah, right. That's rough. Yeah. But when he resumes his work schedule, you need to make an appointment. I don't bloody need a head doctor. You do. I don't! You abandoned your post, Colm! Okay, we're practically in literal hell. You may, we may never get back home. You were on Earth. Was I not allowed to be upset about that? Of course, but that doesn't... And now you're here. So that's one big thing fixed. And I haven't neglected my duties again, have I? Not that I know of, but Nito was So saying... there. Things are better. We're together. I'm happier. You and this aren't. Is... What are you saying, Bobby? I'm saying I've had enough time to observe you since I got here, and you're not fine, Calm. I do not need... I love you. I home and you love me right you trust me with all my heart then make an appointment with jay please just one for me for you just one plus nine back on turnic two now then tell me about your star sheet hey hey you got it right must have heard about us. You're getting quite a reputation. Poor dears, lost so far from home. Yeah, it's been a drag. That's why we need the equipment, so we can get back. Yes, I can imagine. We wouldn't want you to have to stay in Vena space any longer than necessary. Uh, you're, a, you're a Vena, ain't you, ma'am? Yes, young man, I am. And I, for one, am happy to welcome guests. But alas, not all of my people are bred with manners. I'm glad to see you're the right sort. Well, thank you, ma'am. I think I will take a bit of that tea. I, I wouldn't. Dom, no. You... Surely you are not insulting my refreshments? Oh, never, Sheenan. I just... Don't think it would be to his liking. Well, how do I know unless I try it? Good point, Ransom. I'll take some, too. Of course, Ambassador. Well, Sheenan, this has been a lovely afternoon, but we really oh, need... Oh, dumb no! You can't leave before we get down to business. Of course not. Ah, the tea smells heavenly. The concierge hey. smacks the teacup from Kake's hand. Oh, whoops. <laughs> what the hell did you do that for? What indeed, Don Mo? That was incredibly rude. Oh, here, Ambassador. Here, have mine. Oh, oops. <laughs> uh, <laughs> man. Gen, come on, man. Apologies, Sheedin. Just bill me for what the cleanup is and uh, the glassware. But we do have to go. Don't move another muscle, Domino. Uh, what's going on? Uh, hey, that tea is eaten through the floor over there. <laughs> oh! Some do find it a tad bit strong. You knew Constantine? Well, her tea is quite famous, or should I say infamous. 
Well, uh, I think it is time we get going. I wouldn't if I were you, Ambassador. Uh, why not? We didn't drink her poison brew. Uh, what's she going to do? <laughs> I rhymed. <laughs> yes, well, Sheenan is much more dangerous than she looks. She ordered us not to move. I advise we listen to her. Uh, I, I don't see any guards out there. What, what's to stop us from just walking no, out wait. of this place? As Ransom tries to exit the room, a laser zaps from the wall and disintegrates him instantly. Oh my god! God, you killed him! It's so discourteous to try to leave without a proper goodbye. What do you want, Sheenan? A great many things, Domno. But don't worry, I am still willing to make a deal with you. I don't want to make deals with those who murder my security officers. Don't be so hasty, Ambassador. There's no other way out of this room than through my laser door. Don't be so sure about that. Do it, Ambassador. I thought you said we shouldn't reveal. Now! Thrifty, beamer us up! <laughs> yippee kake, mother... <laughs> <laughs> what in the world? Ambassador's Diary. I don't know how much help the concierge is going to be to us. Yeah, he knows people, sure, sure, but it seems like most of the people he knows want to kill him. Or us, or both. Well, at least we have the first batch of parts he found us. We're better off now than we were, but we're still not out of Venus space, and there are miles to go before we sleep. Speaking of sleep, before I turn in for the night, I... I think I'd better go and see Lieutenant Yeti. Uh, Norton would have told her by now that her date is off, but uh, uh, she should probably hear what happened from me. Kake out. Well, this is the tale of our noble crew, lost and trapped in enemy territory, lonely and broken. Can they get home? Come back and find out in another universe journey! <laughs> It's all been done. Radio Hour number 489. Universe Journey number 112. Day Off. This episode was written by Jerome Wetzel and directed by Grace Wilson, assisted by Nick Argenbright. It starred Nick Argenbright as Captain Dick Kakei, Sam Clements as Commander Colm Foley, Megan Overholt as Lieutenant Commander Connie Norton, Ashley Clements as Captain Bobby Luna, Joe Morales as Lieutenant Yana, Shane Stefanczyk as the Concierge, Grace Wilson as Ensign Malinito, and TV's Ben Needenthal as Lieutenant Ransom and Lieutenant Commander Waxen. Wendy Parks was Sheenan. Beth Muir was Commander Kaniac. The episode was narrated by Darren Essler, and our Foley artist was Megan Overholt. Our technical director is Shane Stefanczyk. Our music director is Kristen Green. Theme songs are composed by Nathan Haley with lyrics by Jerome Wetzel. This podcast was edited by Truly Awesome Productions. Check out our website at iabdpresents.com. We'd like to thank Boxland, our host performance space. Don't forget to support us at patreon.com slash iabd. A mere $5 donation gets you access to past and upcoming raw audio of our monthly shows, as well as exclusive performances, bloopers, and short stories. Have a great week. But not two weeks. Don't get greedy. Just one. One good week. It's All Been Done presents... Who's Got the Time? <laughs>